Suppose, however, we were to move from the world of the eye to the world of sound, as heard. That note, or tone, fills the whole of my oral field, my heard space. It doesn't occupy a bounded location within a bigger space. It is everywhere in my heard space. There is no zone, so to speak, where the sound is not in the space I hear, where the sound isn't in the space I hear. Suppose I play a second note or tone along with the first. That second tone also fills the same heard space, yet I hear it as distinct, irreducibly different. In the world of heard sound, two different things can be in the same space at the same time and be heard as different. And this is one of the remarkable things about notes and hearing notes. Notes don't have to get in each other's way. They don't have to obliterate or even diminish each other. Of course, they can do both, especially if the tenor in the choir sings too loud or whatever, but they don't have to. Nor do two notes have to merge. They can sound through each other. They can, in a sense, be in each other while being heard as two distinct notes. They can interpenetrate while remaining quite distinct. Interpenetration. And let's not forget another feature of vibrating strings we can hear. Suppose I play that note and I hold the string one octave above that one open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this key down but without sounding the note. So what I've done there is pull the damper off that string. So you have to take my word for it. That string now is free to vibrate. If I strike the string one octave below, I can set that one off. You say that would work with any note. It wouldn't. Let's try the one right next to it. OK? No, it will work with this one, because this is the first harmonic of the lower one. Within that lower string is contained that upper one, and it is set off the upper string. The upper string will vibrate even though it has not been struck. It has been freed to vibrate by the lower string. The lower string sets off the upper string. The more the lower string sounds, the more the upper string sounds. And we can hear that, something called sympathetic resonance. The two tones we hear then are not in competition, nor do they simply allow each other room, tolerate each other. The lower sound establishes the life of the upper, frees it to be itself, enhances it, compromising neither the integrity of the upper sound nor its own. What's more, when certain other strings are opened up alongside both these strings, as in a spread chord, for instance, like that, we can probably, I haven't tried this on this piano yet, but I expect we'll be able to set those off as well. Just, just about. Let's try again. Just, if you had a microphone there, you're close to the piano, you can, those are beginning to sound. Not also, notice also these strings enhance each other. The lower tone becomes richer and fuller in its own sound. The integrity of each sound is not only preserved, but enhanced, enriched. Interpenetration, sympathetic resonance. 